anytime I go anywhere in the world, I always try to find out where the local record store is. And at Groovy Records, you know, initially my goal was just to pick up a couple records, and we did get a few. But we ended up with a lesson that explains how Portuguese rock changed the world. Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna take you to a really cool vinyl record shop in Lisbon. Uh, this guy that we met there knows everything about Portuguese rock history, and this guy asked a lot of questions, like, who's the Portuguese Elvis? You know, who are the Beatles in Portugal? And what were their influences? And we ended up hearing all about a very interesting thing, a song that helped overthrow the fascist dictatorship. It's a big collector item. Hi, I'm Robert, she's Kim, and we're becoming Portuguese. American family relocating to Portugal. And one of the things we're doing is diving into local culture. And we did that this time through rock and roll music. Groovy Records is in the Garasha neighborhood of Lisbon. It is one of the great record stores. We got so much more than just a few records for the collection. Part of that was because of Edgar. Edgar Raposo, he was amazing. Encyclopedic he is knowledge. Expert, everything he said was almost like a book. He has written a book about Portuguese rock. He knows everything about Portuguese rock. So one of the things we learned about was that the, the music that they focus on, kind of 1960s surf, psychedelic Portuguese rock, is something that most Portuguese people don't even know existed. There was a lot of censorship and every song and every album that came out during that time period had to be approved by the dictatorship. So as you can imagine, not a lot of it made it through. And sometimes there were vinyl presses that have survived through history that <laughs> maybe there's only one copy. It was fascinating. Groovy Records isn't just a record store in Lisbon, it's also a record label. And Edgar, whom we met, is uh, reissuing old rock and roll records. Actually, we were the first label to start reissuing uh, stuff from the 60s. Especially, we are dedicated to, to 60s psychedelic music and garage since ever. Uh, we start to, catch, to, to question why nobody knows this, you know, because uh, most of the, the story of the rock and roll uh, in Portugal started um, starts in the 80s, in the 1980, 1981, and nobody knew anything behind that. Actually, the rock and roll started with a guy called uh, Joaquin Costa. We have, we have the record here, really? actually. The only copy that is this from the record, it's here on the wall of the store. Yeah, it's a uh, 78 RPM recorded here on the radio station nearby. Copy. This copy was found by himself at the flea market. No, that's crazy. He found his own record on a digging session. He found his own record from from sixty from fifty eight, and it's crazy. What you know? What chances? No, no, no. That's you know? <laughs> he talked about that story. The first time that you, you listen to Elvis Presley, it was on a jukebox in the bar downtown, mm -hmm. like in 56, and he get mad, <laughs> he get mad, like, I, I want to do this, I want to do this, so he found a guitar somewhere, he didn't know how to play it, he didn't know about nothing about English, <laughs> and he started to sing. Then we have a lot of kind of Beatles bands uh, in Portugal, like the Shakes, Echoes, uh, Chinchillas, a lot, a lot. Uh, they did a lot of uh, 45s actually at that time. And we had like dozens of festivals of bands in the 60s. Since 61 to 67, I don't know, hundreds of festivals. Because uh, we didn't have the uh, the foreigner bands playing here because it was forbidden. 
the Beatles didn't come, the Rolling Stones didn't come. So only a few British bands and French artists came here to play in the 60s, like Francois Hardy, uh, Johnny Holiday, The Animals, not much, you know? <laughs> we are talking about, you know, the fingers of two hands of artists in the, since the 50s to late uh, 60s. This is a compilation of, um, of 45s from this band called uh, Tartaros. Tartaros. They are from this mean? the Tartars. Oh, yes. You know the, the guys from the north of Russia? Where did they get this music from? How did, how did Tartaros become Tartaros? You know, They're listening, you know, like the shadows, very pretty, pretty famous here in Portugal. Most of the bands were influenced by the shadows here in the early 60s. But this kind of bands, you know, it, it was very poor, the information here in the early 60s. It starts to be more... Uh, uh, inform there is more information after 64, 65. Some magazines started here, the radio stations from uh, UK and France started uh, the advent of the, the small turntables. And then in 66, 67, um, I think it's the year that the, really rev the real revolution starts. Uh, Quarteto 1111, it's maybe one of the most important uh, band after the, the 66, 67. They had about 22 songs censored by the dictatorship. What was it? Were they political songs? They, they're metaphorical, <laughs> political, you know? And every song released in Portugal need to go to the censor office. So their songs and, and the records of Quarteto Mil Centiones, most of them were censored. That's why you don't, you don't find them. It's a folk song from a guy called José Afonso. And it's uh, called uh, Grandula Vila Morena. Grandula Vila Morena. This time in April 1974, the re revolution started. The song was the code. The song started to play in every radio station and the, the, and the, the army came in to, to make the revolution. I don't know, I don't think it's this guy. Oh, it's This guy is the main guy. He is the guy. Really? In Portugal, for everybody, mm -hmm. he represents uh, the revolution. It's like a Che Guevara. Uh -huh. When you want to say, uh, Nazi punks fuck off, for mm -hmm. example, he, you put his face on. He was a very, very interesting guy. Mm. He, did, uh, he did a revolution with his songs. The movie. With no guns. <laughs> no guns. Wow. I mean, they, the soldiers were coming in with tanks mm -hmm. and guns, but it was so peaceful and so welcomed by the locals. They were just flooding the streets and putting carnation flowers in the gun barrels. That's why they call it the Carnation Revolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, only four people died and not at the hands of the army who was doing the coup. Uh, it was actually some cowardly fascists who were just shooting aimlessly out into the crowd when they got kind of barricaded in a building. It's an incredible moment in history that I am embarrassed to say that I didn't even know about yeah. until going on this last trip. And, and it's it. amazing that we really learned about it through music history. Rock and roll. Um, yeah, and uh, it's always fascinating to find out. It reminded me a bit of the time we went to St. Petersburg, Russia. Robert has another channel where he does a show called Robert's Record Corner, all about music and pop culture history. Uh, and we met with those guys and they told us about the ways that they got around censorship, which was also super fascinating. You so, know, rock and roll was seen as rebellious everywhere around the world. But when you go to a place where you could literally go to jail you could get you could get you lose your life for it make it kind of adds an appreciation for what that meant and you know as edgar was talking to us he was saying that he felt that the seeds of revolution began 66 67 with this kind of music that opened people's minds to what was wrong in the society at that time i i was just mind blown by the whole thing 
So anyway, it was a fascinating visit, well worth it. Go check out Groovy Records when you're in Lisboa. And be sure to... <laughs> we did get records. This is, this is the album to get. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. It really helps grow our brand new channel here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. We're going to have a new video every Friday. Plus walking tours. Plus walking tours of different towns and villages around Portugal. As we are becoming Portuguese. See you next time. Don't forget to rock. <laughs> <laughs>